G'day YouTube, 1MJ here, welcome back. Well, Bitcoin is on the rise. There's been a little bit of positive news uh, and we can see that the market's up. So up 2.5%, so just shy of that $350 billion mark. What I'm really loving is gas prices on ETH. They've come right down. Uh, and a number of the bigger platforms are now moving on to layer two scaling solutions, which is good synthetics networks and things like that. But Bitcoin, we can see, moved up 2.5% in the last seven days. So a lot of things are looking green, but a number of things are still sort of fairly in the red, like where was it, VeChain? Yeah, here, yeah. ooh, that's hurting a little bit. But anyway, VeChain's still doing uh, reasonably well from when I got in anyway, it's still up. Uh, Uniswap, uh, down 22%, but made a move. So, you know, my buy order for Uniswap uh, and those other... Uh, DeFi plays that I'm looking at probably will get negated, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, you know, again, down 17% Synthetics Network. I've got to buy order in for Synthetics, for Uniswap, for Aave, uh, Carva. There's a few different ones, and we'll just have to wait and see. So while the things are positive at the moment, you know, Bitcoin's made a move, and let's go over here and have a look. It's made a great move actually. So it's broken straight out of this trend line. So we're down below it, down below it. <laughs> we do love Bitcoin. Uh, it was down below it and it's broken out, but now we can see it's at a bit of a holding sort of pattern here around that $10,900-ish level. What I am sort of somewhat worried about, not so much worried, but the weekend is upon us. At least it's Friday sort of afternoon here in Australia. It's about to go Friday morning uh, over in the States. Quite often, not always, but you know, more than not, there's a bit of a sell-off of Bitcoin over the weekend. So I am somewhat, you know, worried that this is going to roll over and come back down and we still may test that kind of $10,600 level. Look, it's quite possible that we just bust straight through 11 k uh, and we do make a really good run uh, up around this sort of $12,000 mark. But we'll just have to wait and see. It's early days yet. But I, I am, uh, you know, expecting this to roll over a little bit. And maybe we come back down and test that, you know, $10,500 level. So I guess that's sort of somewhere around about yeah, here. I'm going to say we come back down and retest this trend line uh, over the weekend at some stage. But we'll have to wait and see. Now, we go over here. And this is why Bitcoin has pumped up a little bit, we think. You know, no one really knows. But good old Jack Dorsey... He has put $50 million, so that's 1% of our Square Cash apps, cash into Bitcoin. Allegedly, from what I've read, he's been buying $10,000 worth of Bitcoin every time he's get paid. So that's either weekly or fortnightly or something like that. $10,000 worth of Bitcoin uh, every time he gets paid. So that's roughly, you know, sort of a Bitcoin every time he gets paid. And now he's taken to, uh, Square Cash app and put a uh, $50 million worth, so 1%. And that has really started to, you know, get people enthusiastic about it. But we'll just have to wait and see whether that's going to hold. But I did put a tweet out over here. So trickle, trickle, flood. The bull run is just beginning. Watch out for a bit of uh, sell-off over the weekend, but we aren't going below 10K. I don't, I don't think we will. It's not to say we won't, but I just don't think we will. Again, none of what I offer is financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. Buckle yourself in because when this explodes, and in my opinion it will, 14 will 14,000 will happen quickly, and we know what happens then. So what happens at $14,000? Uh, Sorry, I'll zoom out. This is roughly $14,000, so we're not that far from it. I'll slide this across a little bit. We're really not that far away from it. And once we hit 14,000, there's really nothing between 14,000. The only bit of kind of resistance, uh, you know, might be found at sort of 17,000, but it's very, very small. I think once we get past that 13,000, let's just round it up, let's just say 14,000. Once we hit 14,000, and I don't think that we're that far away from it, I think it happens, you know, November, sort of December, everyone's going to pile in. All the other institutions and things like that that haven't got into it yet and are sitting on the sidelines and they're unsure, once we breach this, 
I'd say they're all going to jump in. They're going to go, yep, we're going to get to the all-time high. Because at the moment, they're just unsure there. Is this just going to roll over and, you know, find lower lows? Or once we hit here, they're going to be pretty certain, yep, this is on its way up and it's about to test its new all-time high. And that's when all the other big institutions that haven't got in yet are going to start to jump in. And once we hit the old all-time, not the old, but the all-time high, uh, it's going to start to explode. That's when things are really, really going to start to move. And it's going to move fast. I don't know if it'll happen this year. I definitely think we're going to hit the $14,000 mark sometime this year. Uh, if it's not late October, uh, you know, November, December, anyway, somewhere around there. And then after that, particularly next year, I'd say we're going to hit that all-time high. And I, I think it'll be likely early in the next part of not, uh, next year if it's not late in the uh, last part of this year. So December, again, maybe we sort of hit this and then it's just going to start to rocket. Now, all those altcoins that have been bleeding off, they are going to... They're not going to do as well when Bitcoin starts to rocket, but they will be dragged up with Bitcoin. They're just not going to be doing the crazy big moves that they do when Bitcoin has a pause because that's the way the cycle works. When Bitcoin's on a run, it'll drag everything up with it. But when it kind of pauses and we get this sideways movement and things like that, that's when the big, that's when the altcoins really do well. And basically what happens here is so this is Bitcoin. It got this huge run. When Bitcoin, when Bitcoin started to sell off here and die a bit, this is when the altcoins went on their big massive run. So Bitcoin will drag the altcoins up, but then when it pauses or it gets to its all-time high, people generally tend to jump out of Bitcoin and then they're into altcoins. So this is the Bitcoin stop, but the altcoins, this is where they started to go absolutely parabolic and crazy in here. And this is where you want to start taking some profits. You can take profits early on. Uh, and look, no one's going to pick the exact top. But all I'm going to say is that, you know, when you think it's at its top, whether you think it's, you know, 60,000, 70,000, you know, 80,000, 100,000, 200,000, whatever you think the top of Bitcoin is, once you believe it's getting close, uh, get your altcoins ready because they're going to start to pump even harder once it hits there. And then again, prepare to take some, uh, some profits. That's my plan. I don't know what Bitcoin's going to get to yet. I definitely think sort of 60,000, uh, 70,000 is pretty easy for Bitcoin in the peak of this next bull run, but it could go quite high. Nobody knows. But something I found interesting. So a researcher debunks Plan B stock to flow model and likens Bitcoin to a tech stock. There are many reasons why the price of Bitcoin can rise or fall, but S2F is not one of them, uh, contends report author. So I still like his uh, stock to flow model chart, and I think it has some relevance. Just whether it's going to be exact or not, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I still like it, and, and I'll follow it, and I'll take some guidance from it. But it's not the be-all and end-all for me. So a report authored by the research team of ByteTree purports to debunk one of the most popular Bitcoin uh, valuation models, stock to flow. The model provides a very optimistic forecast for Bitcoin, claiming that a year from now we should see price uh, levels above 100k. And look, we, we could, who knows? Particularly if, you know, uh, the institutional buyers really start to pile in, I think a $100,000 Bitcoin is quite easy. It is, you know, well within range if we get that big mass adoption. But it just might not be this Bitcoin cycle. It might still take another halving before we start to see those prices. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. So uh, ByteTree's co-founder and chief investment officer, Charlie Morris, uh, dedicates the entire fourth chapter of the report to debunking it. The stock to flow models have been applied for decades to forecast the price of commodities like gold and silver. Stock is the existing supply of the asset and flow is the additional uh, new supply that is being generated. Applied to Bitcoin, it hinges on the fact that its inf uh, inflation or flow will be uh, getting progressively smaller while the stock to flow ratio will be getting progressively higher, thus producing the uh, sky is the limit forecast for the price. So I won't read through the whole, art whole article, it'll take a while, but basically as the uh, title goes, he basically doesn't believe that it uh, is, 
you know, relevant uh, and, and exact and, and thinks, you know, it's not a good source uh, of information to follow. So, you know, again, a lot of people have really kind of, you know, got on board with Plan B stock to flow model and I still like it and I think it still has relevance. I just don't know how exact it's going to be. Look, he, he could be completely exact. We're just not going to know. We'll have to wait and see. But things are looking really, really positive. So we go over here. Again, 10,000 sort of 800. We can see it's 10,900. So there you go. We're getting close to breaking that 11K. And I think once we break that 11K, we're going to push up uh, and test, yeah, 12,000 pretty quickly. 12,500. Now, don't get me wrong, not overnight, but it won't take long. And once we break that 12,500, 14,000 will happen really quickly. I really don't think there's going to be much between 14,000 and 12,500. Although I do see once we get to that $14,000 range, that will be resistance and it'll probably fall back over and come back down and sort of test this $12,000 level. But once we can break through that 14K level, uh, it's off to the races after that. It's not going to take long at all to get to 20,000. And once we hit 20,000, that's when you're going to start to see, you know, moves like this where it's just going to start to rocket up. Uh, and go quite fast and what the you know ceiling is who knows but last but not least let's go and have a look at DeFi. so i've got my buy orders in uh, and i was waiting for prices to go lower but i think i'm going to miss out on those so uniswap i was looking for it to go down to nearly three dollars uh, i don't think that's going to happen but again the weekend we could see another sell-off of bitcoin and that'll put fear in the market and maybe I might see uh, Synthetics Network. I think I was uh, still around about $3. I think I was a little bit above $3 on Synthetics Network. Aave, again, I think I was looking at around about 43, 41 cents, or maybe even 37 cents. I, I can't even remember. I'd have to get back on CoinSpot and have a look. But in the end, I'm not sure if they're going to happen at the moment. I'll have to keep an eye out over the next few days and see what happens. And if nothing happens, then oh well, I've still got my cash sitting there on the sidelines for a rainy day. But anyway, things are looking positive at the moment. But again, I do, you know, suspect that Bitcoin is going to roll over a little bit. On the weekend, I think we'll probably come back down and sort of test uh, this line again, maybe. But maybe we stay a little bit higher. You know, the these lows have been getting higher and higher all the time, and I can and I, I believe it's going to stay that way. I don't think we're going to come back down and test the ten thousand dollar level anytime soon, and I certainly don't think we're going to come and do that nine thousand six hundred dollar range anytime soon. Maybe the low of the next bear market is a possibility, but you know. Even then, I think the $9,600 CME gap uh, may be one of the few percentage percentages sorry, that just get missed. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Uh, most of us should be on that gain train at the moment. Just beware there might be a little bit of a sell-off over the weekend. Hit that like button and subscribe. That'll be much appreciated. Get my videos out there, and I'll see you next time.